Ah, what a hazy day across the Alberta prairie. Currently, I'm overlooking the growing U4 course here I have at the farm, and uh, I'm getting it prepped for the winter snow and my Kyosho blizzards. But I figure today would be an awesome opportunity to introduce this new truck to our audience. This truck is actually built by my friend Chuck. I actually acquired it in a trade uh, for one of my Trail Finder 2s and he came to me first and said I'd love to trade with you because I think that the viewers of RC Adventures could really uh, learn a few things about the truck and maybe even incorporate them into their truck. Now you can see the guy's arm is moving, his head is moving and if you have a close look he's even moving a shifter. Now what Chuck did was he, he split off the wires for the servo, the front steering servo, added a steering servo for the steering wheel under the dashboard, and as well added a servo under the guy's body, plus one back there. These are all mini micro servos uh, for the shifting. Now, I had to flip the steering servo upside down to do a quick fix because the other ones, the Traxxas servos, were actually running uh, uh, in reverse, uh, in reverse to the steering, so that was no big deal. I just flipped over the Savok servo, it's waterproof there, made a new steering arm for it. Check it out. The lights are actually, the undercarriage lights and the front headlights, which are super bright, are powered by this 3S battery in the back. On the inside, I've got a 3S LiPo battery running the truck. It's a 2200 milliamp hour. Uh, I've got a uh, FH SS, sorry, receiver on the inside for my Futaba, uh, uh, my 4PX. Everything is basically, uh, the BEC is powering simply the servos and the Sidewinder ESC and the brushless motor uh, are in there. Now the reason you're seeing a glitch is because my receiver actually has a glitch in it. The way it's wired is 100% correct, uh, but it's not a big deal. I got a new uh, receiver on the way and I think it's time we get this truck out on the course. Now the tires I've chosen to put on this truck are not actually mud tires. These are the stock tires from the Axial Bomber. But this truck has plenty of power and even with the mud in the tires, it's going to have plenty of traction. Drivers ready, three, two, one. Here we go, technical today, not fast. Here I come around the top crest, rolling down, very little drag brake on this ESC. That's how I have it set at least. Course one, bumpy bumpy. It's hard to see the amount of side hill here, but these rocks definitely give us a challenge. Articulating up and around. gate, I can't hit a flag or else I'd point. point of a gate or a course like this is to not gain points.
Down into the rock. This is a deep dive in here. Oh! <laughs> it's bound to happen. <laughs> And on the outside, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Stuck in one spot. There we go. Should have kept on it. That happens, man. I wanted to make it hard, so it is hard, especially with all the loose soil. <laughs> all right, repo. Oh, there goes a flag. <laughs> Here we go off the course. <laughs> Here's the channel I normally run down. I've actually been filling it in so it's a little bit less wide, but it makes for a great course. Can hardly wait for next season to get some rain in here. <laughs> So there you go, my friends. A good look at the new <laughs> wraith slash rock buggy combo I have here at the studio. Hopefully you guys have been inspired to get outside and try the hobby of radio control, because 
really the only limit out there, of course, other than budget, is imagination. If you can imagine it, you can build it. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures.